This is a standard question which comes up when you study Advaita Vedanta. If I worship God only because, first of all, God is something different from me. And if my self is one with God, if I am one with God, then how can I worship God? It's like worshipping myself then. So, how do you reconcile this? And yet, there's in Advaita Vedanta, there's full-fledged bhakti and devotion and worship of God. So, how do you reconcile this? Uh, the story which Sri Ramakrishna was fond of and in a parable about Hanuman and Ramachandra. Sri Ramachandra, who is an avatar, an incarnation of God, asks Hanuman, what do you think of me? What do you think of me? Or how do you regard me? And Hanuman says, Deha buddhya dasoham, jiva buddhya twadankshakam. Atma buddhyatu tvamevaham iti me nishchitamati. Now this verse, it solves this uh, problem. The question which is asked here, this is the answer. What does it mean? As a body, identified with this Hanuman body. I am Hanuman. I am your servant. You are Rama, my master. Thou art my master. I am thy servant. This is uh, a devotional approach. That you are my Lord. I am your servant. Then, I am also a sentient being. I am not just this body. Hanuman says that I am this sentient being, this being with um, consciousness and mind, and I have had many births earlier. So this sentient being is, is part of the divinity. You are the all-encompassing divinity. I am thy part. As a jiva, I am your part. And then, as pure consciousness, what the questioner is asking. As consciousness itself, I and you are one reality. This is my conviction. What is the answer? As body, as an Hanuman, I am the servant, you are my Lord. As, um, this, as sentient being, you are the whole, I am thy part. And as uh, pure consciousness, you and I are one reality. The first one is uh, dualistic, Dvaita. The second one is um, uh, qualified Manism, Vishishta Dvaita, part and whole relationship. I am your part. And the third one is non dualism, the um, identity of the human and the divine. So it shows how one can be devotional and also regard oneself as identical with Brahman. The question might be yes, yes, I know all that, but I'm asking about the third one. When you regard yourself as one with Brahman, that I and that reality, we are one reality, then how do you worship Brahman? So it, it is like this. Here the concept of two truths is very useful. Paramarthik satyam and vyavaharika satyam. The absolute truth and the transactional truth. Um, the absolute truth is that there is only one reality. Existence, consciousness, place, Brahman, one without a second. And everything else, everything that you see in this world is an appearance of that one reality. In reality, one. In appearance, many. See, the many in appearance cannot be denied because we are experiencing it. Any philosophy, whether it is dualistic, non-dualistic, whatever it is, has to accept that we are seeing a pluralistic universe. Because that's already there. It's, it's being experienced. Now you have to explain it. Advaita Vedanta says, this is one appearing as many. So, one non-dual non -dual reality, ekam eva advitiyam, one without a second, that's the reality, that's the ultimate truth, paramartik satyam. But, there is also a level of multiplicity where we are experiencing difference in this world. Now, God, world and sentient being, Ishwara, Jagat, Jiva, this triangle is the, uh, the, the empirical truth, the lower truth, the relative truth, Vyavaharika Satyam. I am a sentient being, I am an individual being, and here is this world, and there is a God who is the creator, preserver, and the, the destroyer of this world, the omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent God. So this is relative truth, Vyavaharika Satyam. And the absolute truth is that I and that God are one reality. That Brahman alone exists and appears as many. Again, one might ask, what is all these two truths? Truth can only be one. How can there be two truths? Mm -hmm. uh, but there can be. When you uh, read a novel, 
when you watch a cinema don't you discuss the plot of the cinema who did what as if it is real yeah. so there are two levels of reality you are, you are uh, inhabiting uh, a level in the movie or in the novel and your own reality are they equal no they are not equal one is fictional the other one is what we consider to be real similarly the two truths one is real brahman and the other one is a level of appearance so aren't you saying ultimately then the brahman alone is real and then god is part of appearance here one has to be careful that absolute reality brahman non dual reality when it appears as this universe then where is that non dual reality it is saguna brahman it is god that same non dual reality is the god of religion uh, then what is this but then you can say that uh, i am also the god i am also the same brahman correct and this world it's an appearance of that same brahman the same non dual brahman appears as this world and is nothing but the god of religion ishvara saguna brahman and is identical with you brahma satyam jagat mithya jiva brahmai vanapara brahman alone is real the world is an appearance of that brahman and you the jiva are none other than that brahman uh, so but in this uh, discussion god is left out you're talking about me the world and brahman what about god ishwar asaguna brahman see if you are none other than god in brahman what about poor ishwar a god is god anything other than brahman god is other, it's, it's the same is none other than brahman the non dual brahman of uh, the paramarthika the absolute reality is the saguna brahman in advaita vedanta you talk about two brahmans two brahmans not that there are two there is a higher brahman para brahman apara brahma the lower or relative brahman which is the brahman that you relate to notice when hanuman said as a body as the pers- as this person hanuman i am your servant you are my lord he is setting up a relation you are my master i am your servant at this level of our existence you have to set up a relation with god master and servant or friend like arjuna and krishna he regarded krishna as his friend or father and child mother and child sometimes you can say god or um, uh, is my father or mother like shri ram krishna regarded god as mother or you can be the father or mother and god is your child yeah, like the baby krishna or the baby jesus that's the point of um, having a baby form of god to love and revere so that you can re- relate to it as a child or the beloved god is my beloved like the gopis or like uh, radha and krishna these are all relations so vedanta what it does is it divinizes our human relations and humanizes our divine relationship you set up a human relationship with god and you divinize your relationships with the all human beings you see god in all human beings um so that is the answer you so see that is not very clear so am i supposed to worship god or not yes you are <laughs> even as a non dualist yes you are why because as long as we are firmly identified with one body and mind we need the help of god this is just think about it whether you regard yourself as brahman or not right now are you not eating talking walking going to the bank um, going to your office uh, relaxing uh, all of these does brahman go to the bank does brahman uh, eat drink walk around no when you are doing all these activities throughout your day how in what identity are you acting as the individual being if you can eat food when you are hungry if you lie down on a bed and sleep when you are tired when you need money you go to the bank and get money or the atm and get money what harm has poor god done that you can't worship god spare a little time for worshiping god also this is part of the same level of transactional reality now why would you do that one is we need the help of god for what for leading a good safe protected uh, useful worldly life and for spirituality krishna says those who are in the world they need they are in suffering in the world they worship me those who are not suffering but they need something in this world you know more success a better life 
they worship me. Those who are spiritual seekers, those who seek knowledge and devotion and liberation, moksha, salvation, they worship me. So we are all spiritual seekers. You worship God because you need the help of God for enlightenment. The most powerful help that you get in this universe is God. And God wants us, wants you to be enlightened. So you take the help of God. Now one more question remains. After I'm enlightened, then that means when I know I am Brahman, then I don't have to worship God anymore. Krishna says, the, the, the enlightened ones are also those who worship me. Artha, Artharthi, uh, uh, Artha, Jigyasu, Artharthi, Jnanicha. The four kinds of devotees. Those who worship for some worldly need, those who worship because they want enlightenment, and those who worship because they are already enlightened. If you are already enlightened, why will you worship God? You know you are Brahman, then why are you worshipping God? Uh, Bhagavatam says, Itham Bhuta Harer Gunaha. Such are the extraordinary qualities of the Lord that you cannot, the enlightened one cannot but uh, pour himself out in love and devotion to God. Uh, it's not a sign of enlightenment to say that, oh, now I've become enlightened, I don't need God anymore, goodbye. No, it's a sign of enlightenment that for the first time you be God becomes real for you. Swami Brahmananda said, spiritual life begins after Nirvikalpa Samadhi. <laughs> because Sri Krishna says, among all the devotees, those who worship me, who's those who worship God, it is the jnani, the enlightened one, who is the best devotee. Anyway, so that's the answer. <laughs>